Okay, so let's take a look at question number eight, where we are asked to put a quadratic formula or a quadratic equation into the form of the vertex form, which is what you see right here. So the vertex form is essentially a, um, it's a binomial that we square, and then we just have some constants around the side. So what this really looks like is something very similar to what we just did, where we were taking a trinomial and we're converting it back into essentially a perfect square trinomial, um, just with a little bit of um, numbers left over on the side, which is the value for K and the number A. So what we can do in a question like this is we take a look at, this, at the general form of the quadratic, which we have right here. So this is how we wanna think about rewriting this, this equation. So we're gonna take the quadratic and we're gonna start by writing down the x squared term and then the minus two x term. Now remember, our goal here is to make a perfect square trinomial. So I'm just gonna use another color here in red. What we're going to have to try to find is we're going to have to add a number such that we get a perfect square trinomial out of this first grouping. And then this negative eight on the other side, we're just gonna leave. But because we've added a number to one side here, okay, we have to um, make this equation essentially unchanged, which means we're gonna have to subtract the same number that goes here, okay? So we're gonna add a number here to make this a perfect square trinomial of some value, and then we're gonna subtract the exact same number on the other side because <clears throat> we, have to make, we have to make sure the equation is not is not changed. So if we add to one side, we just subtract right away um, on the other side of it, outside the brackets, um, and that therefore that equation will be unchanged. So think of it just like a balance, right? We add, Whatever we add here, we need to subtract over here. So then what we can go through now is go through our rules that we did in the previous question. So we're going to look, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our middle term. Okay, and our middle term here is minus two. Okay, so what we do is we take half of that. So we're gonna go minus two divided by two. That's gonna give us a negative one. And then our second step is gonna be taking negative one and we're gonna square it, which is gonna give us plus one. So that means what we should be doing here is, I'll just go back to red here, is that we should be adding a one, okay, to create a perfect square trinomial. And then we should be subtracting a one. Now remember, it's a positive one that we're, we're gonna add here. Okay, so then if I go back, um, so I'll just label that A, and then we go to B here. So now if I, I should be able to factor this equation here. Okay, so what I actually have is here is I have x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 8 minus 1. Okay, so now we know this is going to be a perfect square trinomial. Okay, so this is going to be a factor of x minus 1 squared. And then I'm gonna have minus eight minus one, which is gonna give me nine. Okay, and then remember, there's a number in front of this bracket here, which is just assumed to be one. So the equation that we have for this parabola, okay, is gonna have a vertex at, um, it's remember, it's minus h, so it's one plus k, so this is like plus negative nine, so this is gonna, you gotta carry the negative with it. Okay, so we're going to have uh, one and negative nine, which is about right here. Okay, the equation of the axis of symmetry is as an x is equal to one, because that's where the vertical line would be. And then your parabola, this is gonna be the bottom, okay, because it's gonna open upwards because it's a positive number. Okay, so the parabola sketch will be just do it roughly here. I don't know if it's going to be exact. Let's try that again here. You're just going to do something like this. And it goes like that. Okay, and then the axis of symmetry is equal to um, 1 in this case. Okay, so that's how you would approach this question for 8a. Um, I will do one more example where you have a trinomial where you have a number in front of the x squared and you have to do a little bit more in terms of factoring it out because in this case um, we just had a number the a value here is just one okay so it's a very simple equation doesn't change it very much but we'll do another example here that shows it was just a little bit more complicated